Hello, I'm Dominic Walker, JMW's Inside Man, and I'm with Evan Wright. Evan is a partner in JMW's Business Crime and Regulatory Department. Hello, Evan. Good morning, Dominic. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Evan. And we wanted to talk really about online abuse. I mean, in recent months, we've seen, um, you know, the really ugly side of the beautiful game, and it is a small number of people. Um, what can be done about the online racism, the abuse that uh, football players have, have suffered in recent months? Uh, well, it, it's quite timely that we saw Rio Ferdinand getting evidence in front of the Parliamentary Committee uh, very recently, and that was with a view to uh, advancing the online safety bill. This is a bill that's been really two years in the making. It's still at the Parliamentary Committee stage, but will soon be law. Uh, and it, uh, it, it, it's designed to address what is now uh, said to be the contemporary standards of a, uh, an open, just, multiracial society uh, wherein we can deal properly with, with, with this uh, online abuse. And so uh, things are starting to move. Things are, uh, the authorities are becoming much more aware and Rio Ferdinand giving advice like that, by giving advice, talking to, to, to the parliamentary committee about that, and I suppose he was giving advice, is that it, it resets this, this, this contemporary standard because legislation after all is supposed to reflect those contemporary standards. So updating all of that is supposed to then give us the solution in the form of the online safety bill. Now, up to now, we've had really two main pieces of legislation, and that being the Malicious Communications Act 1988 uh, and then the uh, Communications Act 2003. Now, both of them together purport to deal with uh, the, the, the online abuse uh, issues, and there have been some recent uh, prosecutions uh, arising out of, of that legislation, because in theory, uh, that legislation can accommodate what, what's going on at the moment. It can, and, and that, that's been proven, quite literally, in, in the Magistrates Court uh, very recently with these prosecutions in relation to, I'm thinking particularly about the, the West Bromwich Albion player, Romain Sawyers. You can, you can really take two paths. One, encourage a public prosecutor to do what they do and, and prosecute or take it upon yourself to privately prosecute. Now, I, I, I mentioned this in other videos that I've done, but, but uh, private prosecutions are an underused tool in the toolkit. Uh, and uh, private prosecutions can be pursued in, in one of two ways that in, in itself. Either a, uh, a firm like ourselves can look into an offence, investigate, and then encourage a public prosecutor to do exactly that, to publicly prosecute. Uh, if they are not interested and there is still uh, good prospects of success, then a private prosecution can follow and the CPS can either watch from the sidelines or, or they can take over and continue that prosecution on, on occasions, though that's fairly rare. Evan, what is a private prosecution? Well, private prosecution is exactly that. It's a, it's a prosecution that's not brought by the Crown Prosecution Service, HMRC, uh, the, the Financial Conduct Authority, all the, 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 the public prosecutors that you, 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 would, uh, you would naturally think of, the, the, police, the police in conjunction with the Crown Prosecution Service being the classic. Uh, but a private prosecution can be brought by an individual. It can also be brought by a body, uh, an authority, a... Um, uh, a, a local kind, again, the classic example, a, a local council bringing a prosecution in relation to a training standards matter is really a private prosecution. You don't really think about it in that way, but, but it is. Um, counterfeit goods, for example, uh, the uh, legislation based around counterfeit goods and training standards is pursued by the local authorities. And OK, maybe you think about, about them as a public prosecutor, but re in reality, it's a private prosecution. As, as our prosecution is built around brand holders who are, who are um, uh, pursuing cases uh, about counterfeit goods. So there are an awful lot of private prosecutions brought by sort of pseudo public authorities, not so many brought by, by private individuals, but it's perfectly possible. So for players, agents, maybe clubs who think enough is enough and decide to bring a private prosecution, how can they do that? 
first of all, it's an investigative process. So someone has to investigate and get to a point where they ask themselves really, really two questions. Uh, one, do we have the evidence? And secondly, is it in the public interest to prosecute? It's exactly the same code as the Crown Prosecution Service would, would, uh, would use. And some might say a football club, for example, is in a very, very good position to, to investigate things like that because they're much more familiar with these things. Uh, but it is in all but name, really, exactly the same as the, as the police would do. If you'd like advice about how to bring a private prosecution, you can contact Evan directly, insideman at jmw.co.uk or call 0161 82 81 999. I'm Dominic Walker, JMW's Inside Man.